Hello guys, welcome back to another movie review and today we are reviewing The Book of Clarence. <music> Yes, The Book of Clarence has come out early and it is uh, a movie that has come on Cineworld uh, Unlimited for Unlimited showing and it was a struggle, put it that way. This film was a real struggle for me to get through. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Like what was, what, what genre this film sits in, I am baffled by. I have no idea where this film sits for me because I was getting vibes of like they were taking the mick out of the whole religion aspect of Jesus and stuff like that. But then in some scenes it was like they were serious, like they were actually like serious acting happening. So for me it really felt very chaotic in terms of what is this film? Are they taking the mick? Is it a comedy or are they actually serious and you know trying to do something good? You know because there was some scenes in it that were okay. You know, but for the most part, I was totally baffled as an audience member. Just didn't understand. If I didn't do these videos, I probably would have walked out. Um, because yeah, I, I very much was just what the heck. So the movie itself, I did recognize the main guy. He is Lakeith uh, Stanfield, who um actually was in the um uh, Haunted Mansion movie, which again I hated um last year. And we also get uh, David Oyabalumu. Oyabalumu. We've also reviewed movies with him in. James McAvoy. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is in this one as well. And yeah, it basically follows the story of Lakeith's character, who is uh, Clarence. And he's playing two characters, actually, like twin brothers, Clarence and um, Thomas. And in a nutshell, Clarence at the beginning very much doesn't believe in Jesus and God and all that kind of stuff. And he's very anti that and all that. And um, basically just tricks the system. He realizes that, you know, he can make with his friends like he's like oh my god you can make me see now and then they do like street performing in a way they get like a ton of money from like the crowds and um you know they use that money then to free loads of slaves which is a nice thing in terms of liberation and all that but that's that was like the beginning and then it felt like then all of a sudden he started believing then in like jesus and then actually walked on water at one point then the romans people were there and they wanted to like actually capture him and crucify him and all that honestly it was like a real whirlwind a very difficult film for me to follow to be honest and i think it's because of the actual subject it is a subject in terms of like religion and stuff that you're either in it or you're not you know what i mean and honest to god i found it so difficult to watch i did did not leave the cinema I did not get up and go out I sat there and persisted with it uh, just over two hours long and I just found it really hard to watch um, I didn't find the performances very engaging I think the only thing I actually really liked about it was like the set the set was phenomenal like I, do, I don't know even now if they were on like a location or if they were on like a sound stage because there was some bits where it looked very sound stagey and some green screen was used and they had some like props there initially but then the look background you know was uh, was green screen but then there was other shots where like this looks outside like this literally looks like it's on set so they did great to, to question that i think the set was good and also the, the costumes and everything with all like these long gowns and like the hair and everything and you know it was done well in that aspect but honestly i don't know where it sits i don't know if they were taking the mick or i don't know if they were actually trying to make a serious movie um you know based on the bible in terms of stories and stuff so very interesting uh, for me to uh, watch this, of course, uh, but rating the film, it's not gonna be any surprise. I gave it a one and a half star. It's gonna be one of my worst films of the year, but I think it's just because it doesn't sit for me. Maybe it needs a second watch, which pains me to say that, but I don't know where it sits. I don't know what, what it was trying to do, what the ultimate purpose was. And, you know, by the end of it, he was like a true believer and stuff. And I don't understand how the journey progressed so quickly. And I didn't, I must have missed something. I don't understand um, how he got from there to there. There was real elements of, um, of yeah, just chaoticness in terms of the script, in my opinion. Because it did feel like multiple different movies happening at once. But not just multiple movies, multiple genres, as I've said a couple of times. I really did struggle to think, like, where does this sit? What is the actual aim here? Um, I'm not sure if I'm the only one that feels this, because I feel the reviews online, it's been out in America, I think, quite a while. So um, I think the reviews online are very, like, positive or mid to positive. But... I don't understand, maybe I, I've missed something or maybe totally, um, you know, people just like it because, you know, of the topic, like I said, I think the topic is a divisive topic in terms of you either love it or you hate it. I didn't understand it personally and that maybe is my problem. 
but at the same time if you're a filmmaker and you know you're gonna have viewers that don't get it or whatever you need to you know to write it better or, or portray it better and um i think they missed that there getting though because i was really looking forward to this i remember the seeing the trailer in the cinema and i was really looking forward to seeing it but uh yeah miss for me uh book of clarence is the book of shat let's let's close it close that book but there it is one and a half stars thanks for watching guys stay tuned for more and i'll see you in the next one goodbye